I was trying to come outside and beat the sunrise, but I got outside and guess what? Ain't no sunrise. It's just me. I'm going to cross this bridge and I'm so excited, right? It's been a long journey. I done been through everything. I done been all back there and I'm going all up here. <laughs> yeah, boy. I called my girl. I was like, man, where am I at? So I told her where I was at. I wound up. I wound up at a golf course oh, i've been walking all morning it's been dark outside I, I wound up at a golf course so i called my woman i said I'm, I'm on video chat and i'm telling her i say hey listen here look up this golf course and tell me where i'm at this woman said you 36 miles away i said that's impossible woman if it was 36 miles away i'd be walking for like two days i ain't no 36 miles away and then she's like oh you like three miles away <laughs> well four to be more specific right but I just wanted to come see the water. Sometimes when you're going to have a hard time, you just need to see the water. And the water just, it cleans your soul, it sure does, right? You come out here, and you see that big, that big banging by you full of shit, carrying waste a, a thousand miles away to the Gulf of Mexico, to the Gulf of Mexico's. I say, yeah. I just left the golf course on the other side. It's a whole baseball field. I'm asking myself, hey man, what you got on your mind this morning? Huh? What you got on your mind this morning? Really only had my mind was I'm tired of being fat. <laughs> Don't you get tired of being fat? Anybody like looking like that? And so to, to get the weight up off of me, I gotta walk, 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 walk it out, walk it out, huh? And I wanted to have this experience because I was talking to my friend yesterday. I was talking to my business partner as we build this media company. I'm explaining to him, ain't nobody fan do this work. The only audience that I have is the audience of one. It's me. <laughs> I'm talking to me. Well, I'm talking to men in America. I'm talking about my life. <laughs> do you understand? <coughs> I don't even know. I just kind of wanted to feel what the footage looked like. It looks different, feels different. You should have some talking points when you come out here. You should have some things you want to say, some shit you want to rant about, right? What they got over here, man? It says a bald eagle out here. Uh-huh. I think they got alligators out here. What them alligators at? You better watch out. Alligator bite you on your ass, boy. I was walking out here and it was dark. And so since it was dark, I got scared. I said, I told baby, I said, baby, if something jumps out the woods to come get me, baby, please call the police. How are police going to come get them? A police can't get no alligator off my ass in the woods. This is going to be me and the alligator. I'm going to bite my ass. And I'm going to grab that sucker by his tail and throw his ass out there in the water. Something like that. It's got to go like that. Man, if you ever see me fighting an alligator, you better you better bet on me. You better not bet the damn alligator. I'm going to make you a pair of boots. <laughs> My gator booze, my gator booze. I got a whole long way to go, man. I got like four miles to get back. It ain't even no big deal. I just want to go. I just want this weight to go. Man, I was 250 pounds. I said, good Lord, you a big fat man. <laughs> the Lord had no intentions on putting all that weight on my ass. And the only way I get the weight off my ass it's a believe in something more bigger. Man, I had to have some type of goal. We passing up that baseball field now. That baseball field. I used to play Little League Baseball. I used to strike out all the time. I played T-ball. I strike out. I'd just be whiffing and whiffing and whiffing. And my brother, he played T-ball. He played baseball, too. He hitting home runs and all this junk. And everybody like, why can't you play baseball like your brother? Bitch, because I ain't my motherfucking brother. Stop playing with me. <laughs> And so I got all excited to come out here, and, and, and it's just clouds. And I got this expensive-ass camera with me, and I got to get it inside before it starts raining because you're not waterproof. I ain't waterproof. But somehow I'm covered in all this sweat, losing my breath. But hopefully I'm losing some of this fat, too. Fat, go away. Don't ever come back another day. I was stressed out, man. I just had a baby. Had a one-year-old. <laughs> I had a baby one. I'm already fighting mother, baby. Mama, baby, mama got me all in child support court trying to take all my little money, and all of a sudden I fall in love just to do it all over again. 
You can punish me for being a man, but I ain't gonna stop being a man. You can whoop me all you want, I ain't gonna stop being a man. You can financially whoop me all you want, I ain't gonna stop being a man. And I've been trying to have this conversation with other men. I'm like, dear men, it's okay to be a man. You ain't gotta be afraid of no damn woman. You ain't gotta be afraid of no damn government. You ain't gotta be afraid of no another man. Shit. You square up, catch a fade, and if you win or lose, baby, you let them know you ain't just finna punk me. You ain't just gonna run over me and treat me like I'm some type of hoe. <coughs> we was in the Twitter spaces last night, me and me and my boy. We was talking to these grown men. And these grown men started saying things I ain't never thought no grown man should ever say. How a woman be running their life. I'm like, boy, you better not be letting no woman run your life. They act like it was so normal. Dear American man, why do you think it's so normal for American men to think that a woman is supposed to lead them? Dear Kamala Harris. Well, I don't even want to talk to you because you're a lady and you know what I'm saying? You deserve all the respect and the chivalry that all other women deserve. While simultaneously, I got to talk to you men. Men are supposed to be protectors and providers. What kind of man is going to get into a fist fight, any type of altercation, and run his wife out to that front door? Say, baby, you go fight for me. What kind of American man will let the American woman fight in front of him? Hey, dear Kamala Harris, hey, I think that you're a wonderful Indian woman and all that who likes to pretend to be black. But dear Miss Kamala Harris, I can't let you be the commander in chief of the United States of America. I'm a man. I'm supposed to protect you. And I know that you like 60 years old, brittle bones, menopause, and all these things. You can't put no paws on nobody. If it's you and Mr. Putin, who's gonna win? I can't put no money on you, Miss Kamala. I don't even hey, do do Indian people, do y'all got some type of martial arts? I know like down in Thailand and stuff like that, they got the kicking shit. What do y'all do? <laughs> What kind of more sauce they got in there? How are you gonna defend yourself, Kamala? I ain't gonna ask you to defend yourself. Now, if the rest of the world were ruled by women, then I would be like, hell yeah. Y'all should go ahead and let Kamala get into the, the female battle royale for who's the baddest woman in the world. But when we're talking about global supremacy, who's the most powerful nation in the world and the most powerful nation in the world should be led by some type of extremely powerful man who's willing to lay down his life for this nation. How would you feel if in some type of catastrophe, they came and took that woman? All of America would be scared. Cause y'all know what's finna happen. They finna take her milk and cookies. They gonna say, Mala, Mala, I want your milk and cookies. That's gonna be the reality. And if you wanna pretend like that's not gonna be reality, then you can do that. But ain't nobody got no time to be playing with you. Ain't nobody got no time to be playing, from old, playing with old Kamala Harris. Dear men, tell the truth and get some power. Dear women, tell the truth and get... Y'all know y'all don't want no woman running this nation. Y'all know y'all don't want no woman running this world. <laughs> because everybody knows. Just through facts, just through understanding, just through lived experience, just by watching the NFL, just by watching the Olympics, just by watching the NBA, every human being knows. The men are physically dominant. Men are ha, men have the ability to get busy, and there's not very many women who have the physical ability to get busy with any man. The average woman can't get busy with the average man. The above average woman can't get busy with the average man. I think Kamala Harris can be a wonderful politician. Sitting somewhere behind a desk, listening to what a man tell her to write down, point blank, period. Now let's change the subject. As we in this room and I'm talking to these men, these men are having this conversation. Boy, that's a beautiful view out here on the bayou. You ever see Eve's Bayou? That's a crazy, sick movie. <laughs> Why is it a crazy, sick movie? They're always trying to make women seem like some type of victim. And of course, Eve's Bayou was a victimhood movie and Samuel Jackson was supposed to be like some type of terrible daddy who did bad things to his daughter. I don't recall that much. It wasn't a very good movie. I know some beautiful women in that bad boy, right? And all... <coughs> man, don't you be spitting on camera. That's not That's not, That's not. not how no man's supposed to be doing. You ain't supposed to be spitting on no camera. I do what the hell I want to do. That's the power of being a man. That's what masculinity tell you. Masculinity tell you you can do anything you want to do. Even if it, go, if it, even if it comes with 
getting put behind that fence. I've been behind the fence before. Hell yeah. They sent my black ass to the penitentiary. And guess what I did? When I got to the penitentiary, I told them some bitches, this is that same thing, nigga. I don't give a fuck. You got have me locked up. Now, now, now what? You gonna put me in jail again? You gonna put me in solitary confinement again? I spent a lot of damn time in solitary confinement. And you said, man, you a fool. No, 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 no. I think being bold and being courageous and fighting for what you believe in, I think that's a prerequisite to being a man. And so if you ain't willing to lay down your life for the thing that you believe in, I got a question. Hey, do you really believe that thing? So I get passionate. Some people might call me extra. And if, if I'm extra, man, who don't like extra? Who don't, who don't like a raise? Who don't like no bonus? Who don't like no extra pepperonis on their pizza? Who don't like, who don't like no extra big titties, huh? Who don't like no extra? Who don't like no extra ass? I don't like no BBL. But if it's just a big old fat shake and stretch mark having ass, boy, I love me some extra. Want some, give me some, need some. Put it on my face. Now put it on my waist. Now give me a taste. And I put my mouth on you. Boy, you nasty. You be looking out in your hell. Yeah, sometimes one time. This one time, it smelled so good. It smelled like a flower. But it was a natural flower. You could tell when they got them body sprays. I said, girl, what you put down here? She said, water. <laughs> Ooh, that thing was sweet like water. I be hopping back and forth, right? Man, what they got over there? Why is there a truck over there? You can't even see the truck. Why they got a truck back over there? I can't get high enough. I ain't tall enough. They got a truck over there in this dilapidated building. I think somebody want me to come live over here and fix up that truck. Be a revolutionary over here in the countryside. You tell everybody, you tell every terrorist in the world. You know, I, 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 I think politicians be terrorists because they terrorizing their constituents by not doing what I asked them to do. It's a horrible agenda. And so I, I, got, I got sidetracked because I seen the, the place I want to stay. I seen that old broke down pickup truck. What is it about men wanting to fix up an old broke down pickup truck? We just want to fix things, build things. I think consumerism is mainly a feminine ideology, you know, to just buy, 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 buy. And when we got men out here just want to buy everything, be everywhere, take pictures on the beach with a little weenie out, I say, boy, I'll put your tallow whack up. Hell, you want to take a picture with your speed on, try and, get your try and get your lady lumps on. I got to tell you one for men. Stop trying to be like women. We different. Stop it. And this, and this space is what the conversation was having because it's important for men to talk to men. So we was having this conversation in the spaces. These men was trying to act like a man's sexual appetite is the same as a female's sexual appetite or vice versa. They was like, if, I went, if I'm with 30 women, how am I going to get mad at a woman for being with 30 men? Easy. In my encounters, when I'm with a woman, I'm in, I'm the, I'm in the position of power. I'm in charge. If at any point in time there's something I dislike about this experience, I can physically change this experience. I don't think there are very many women who have the ability to be physically dominant when they're with their intimate partner. And so they submissive. They're not the ones who are doing the pounding. They're being pounded. And that's a great conversation. We got guests coming up on the horizon. I really appreciate the conversation that we done had. I'm going to get back to the bridge. We're going to come down the water. When we come down the water, we're going to see these rapids. And it's going to be fascinating. There's birds out here. Snakes out here. Alligators out here. We out here. Oh boy.